welcome to the webinar. My name is James Timmons. Today I'm going to show you how to create embroidery lettering with CorelDRAW graphics in Embroidery Studio E4.0 Designing. I have my CorelDRAW screen or my work page available here and I'm going to navigate. I'll left click on the text tool. You can also activate this tool by pressing F8 on your keyboard. As I left click, I'll navigate on my screen. I'm going to left click my mouse button and I'll type in my wording. You want to make sure that once you type your lettering in, in order for me to change the text, I'm going to navigate over to the left side of my screen and I'll left click my pick tool. That places me in select mode. In select mode, I'm able to navigate up top. I can select my down arrow here on my font list and I'm going to try to locate a font that's uh, thick enough that will support the stitching from the embroidery side. It's very important to remember that in embroidery everything has to be thicker and the spacing has to be moved further apart. As I navigate down my list, here I can scroll. Looking for my desired font. You have a list of them here that you can choose from. I use my Comic Sans and I want to use Comic Sans bold. Keep in mind that you want to make sure that your text is bold and that your columns on your text is at least a minimum of 1.2 millimeters in width. Once I select my text on screen, at this point I can from here from the Corel side or I can do this on the embroidery side, I can actually go in and edit the size it's important to know what the finished size of that embroidery is uh, before you uh, start either putting in text or digitizing. It's very important to know what size the letters are. When you're placing text from the Corel graphics mode like you see here, the text needs to be large enough in order for it to be legible, seen on the physical garment when it's stitched out. Small lettering will not work. So you have to make sure that your lettering, when you're working with this, has to be at least five millimeters in, in height. In the width of your columns, again, they need to be a minimum 1.2 millimeters in width. Once I have my text on the screen and I have it selected, I'm ready now to convert this over to the embroidery side. But before I do this, I want to make sure that I have all of my areas here intact before I do the conversion. First, I'm going to navigate up to the object drop menu. I'm going to scroll down and I want to convert the text to curves. That will allow me to put the text in an editable mode. As I select, as I navigate up top, you have a tool here that's called Tag Fill as a Turning Satin Stitch. Okay. I'm going to select that and apply that to my text on my screen here. The next step is for me to navigate up top and choose convert graphics to embroidery. As I left click, it will take my lettering over. I am on my second row of keys up top. I'm going to press the zero key here for a full view of my text so that I can see this at full view. What I'll do at this point is I'll go in, I'll need to do a stitch player and you can also access this tool by pressing shift R on your keypad. As I left click, this is very important because this is going to show you exactly how your machine is going to stitch this out. You want to make sure that you have the necessary underlay stitches for the lettering in question. 
and you want to make sure that you don't have too many underlay stitches. Okay, the size and width of the text here tells me that I should only have a center run underlay stitch for the text here, but as you can see, it's doing a what it looks like to be an edge run underlay stitch under those as well. Those will have to be modified. As we continue, just to see how the software sticks the items out, making sure that it has, the, again, the proper underlay stitch, which we will have to go in and modify that ourselves in order to prepare this for the production floor. I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Again, the width of the columns at the size that there are currently should be only a center on underlay stitch for this. And I just wanted to see how everything else stitches out uh, before I go make my adjustments. Again, any small lettering will not work with the automatic conversion. And inside the software, we do have small lettering that were digitized specifically for small text uh, that you have that you can use also if that font matches what you're trying to output. Okay, once that's done, uh, we're going to click the stop here to close the stitch player. And at this point now, I want to go in and I want, I'm going to zoom out of this. And any area that you want to zoom in or out of, you just place your cursor there. And to zoom out, I'm just going to roll my mouse button backwards like this. I'm going to slide this over here to the left. What I want to do here also is as I, as I select this, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to my object properties. Under object properties, I want to scroll over. I'm going to click my little thumbtack here to lock my object properties on the screen so it doesn't move. And I just want to go in with my underlay. And as I can see here, the underlay it's got an overhaul of underlay stitches here. Okay, We definitely don't need a secondary underlay stitch for these uh, tiny letters here. And for my choice of by segment, the shape is going to do the underlay based on the outer shape of the actual object. The by segment will base that on. I'll navigate up top here. I'm going to click on Show Stitches. The segment refers to if you have separate segments in the lettering. Like for this letter T here, I have three segments here. Okay. And in the end I have two. This will be the segment, and I do want to control this by the segments. And I'll navigate to my edge run and I'll choose center and underlay stitch. Okay. I'll press the zero key. And I'm also going to select up top as I select here the show stitches. So now when I do my stitch player, uh, it should only be a single underlay stitch there as it's showing here in the uh, stitch out. So this is exactly what you want to see for a text that's this size. We can speed this up by adjusting the marker. Okay, we'll stop this. Next, once you have your lettering or your design over into the embroidery mode, it's very important to save this as the EMB file. That is our proprietary outline file. That is our blueprint file that allows you to increase the size of a design from a left chest size to a full back size with the necessary adjustments. And we're going to navigate to a file drop menu. I'll choose Save As. And we'll just give it a name here. I'm going to save this as the EMB file. Again, this is the file that you want to save this at first. And now that our file is saved, um, at this point, 
uh, you will need to go in and look at the lettering to make sure that the lettering is uh, acceptable as far as uh, the way that it looks and how it's going to stitch out as well. And here, as I roll my mouse button forward here, as I'm looking at the, the letters here, sometimes you'll have lettering that will come out looking this way. Okay, And it's entirely up to you as, as, to, as to how you want to use that, that R in that particular way. If you're very picky, or you have a customer that's very picky, this is going to stick out. They're going to see this because that can look a lot better than it looks here currently. Okay, and at this particular point here, uh, you will you can go in. I'm going to zoom in to this. I'm going to press S to hide the stitches, and I want to go in and I want to uh, digitize this R to make it look better uh, than the original one that you see here on the screen. And I'm just going to change my color here real quick. I'll navigate and I'll choose my column B stitch here as I left click. I'll make sure that my satin stitch here is selected here in my fills. And I'm just going to go in and I'll start from here from the bottom. I'm going to zoom in closely. I'll start here from the bottom. And I'm just going to duplicate this R here and there. I'm going to press enter and I'll go to side B with my column B stitch here. So I go here, here, and there. I'm going to press enter. If I want to see what it looks like, I can press S to show the stitches, like you see here. And as I continue, I'll digitize the second part of my R, just like this. Once I finish the first side of A, I will press enter. And now I can do side B, and it looks like this. And I'm going to press Enter here. I can press S on the keyboard to let you see how it looks. And so this is what this is what I want my R to look like. Okay. If I want to control the stitch angles a little bit better, I can do that as well. I'll press the letter S here, and I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to click on the area that I just digitized. Now I want to add stitch angles to this and I can easily do this by navigating and selecting the reshape tool. The reshape tool shows me the node points that were used to digitize the shape with. I want to add a stitch angle. And I'll press my control key down and as I do that if I navigate my cursor on top of the outline you can see the little stitch angle tool occur here. It will appear. I'll left click to add a stitch angle here and I can left click here to add a stitch angle there also and I can click here as I left click I can add a stitch angle to this so now if I press S I have a much more controlled stitch angle with this and I can use this R on any other R's that I have inside of the design as well I click my pick tool I'm going to click my little save design here to save my design I'll press 0 for a full view and as you can see I do have another R in the design that I can use for it and when you're working with text like this any letter that you have that needs to be modifying if it's the same letter you could always just uh, do one and just copy and paste it okay like for this one I'll select I'll draw a box around my R here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press control D is in dog and I'll use my arrow key at 3 o'clock to slide this R over to the next position. And this is very simple. Oftentimes you won't have to replace every single letter. But the ones that need replacing, uh, they need to come out. Okay. And so I've replaced both of the R's, but I'm not finished yet. I'll have to go in and modify the letters on the bottom as well because I'll have to take the other R's out in order to insert these R's into the design area. I'm going to navigate to my color optic list on the right side here as I left click and I'm going to also navigate up top left click on the thumbtack to where it points at 6 o'clock and this is going to give me a view here of my design 
here it's going to show the vector art that was uh, converted. I really don't need that anymore. Okay, so I can select that. And once I select that on the screen, I can press my delete key. Looking into my color object list, of course, it shows you all the objects that are on my screen. The first object here that was converted over, you know, we can see the object type listed here. And whenever you see the two arrows, uh, you have your starting point and your exit point, which means all of these letters are connected together because they're branched is what we call it. And branching is, is what we call, and this, we'll get into that in another, in another segment, but it's uh, selecting two more objects and combining, combining them together in order to control the number of trims in, inside the design. So with this one, I'm going to right click on this and I'll need to break this apart. And as you can see here, my color object list, it breaks all those items apart, as you can see here. What I want to do is I want to go in, I'm going to zoom in as I roll my mouse button forward here. I can, um, if I want to hide the red R's that I just placed in, I'll just navigate to my color object list. I'll select the color. I can right click on this and I can hide those. Okay. At this point now I can draw a box around this R. I can press delete to remove it. I can draw a box around this R as well. Press delete and remove it. Okay. At this point here too, I'm going to navigate back to my color optic list. I will click on my color red here, right click it, and I want to unhide those. Put places them back on the screen. But at this particular point here also, uh, I need to go in. I need to reorder the stitching blocks uh, here for, for the stitching. And if I click on, if I'm stitching here from right to left, from left to right, I'll select this object. I can press the tab key and you can see how the tab key is kind of jumping around as you can see here. And I want those to flow smoothly. So at this point, I'll go in. I can click on the first thing that stitches. Now we have a tool that's called sequence. It's right here up top. And based on the order in which you click the object, will be the order in which it will stitch after you convert it. I'm going to press control and let stitch this second, this third, this fourth, fifth, sixth, and I'm, I still have my control key held down. Here, here and here, here and there the E in the inside. I'm going to scroll over. I'll choose my D. Again, any order that I'm selecting these will be the order in which they're going to stitch out. And I still have my control key held down as I left click. I may have to make an adjustment with the T. And if I need to, if I need to zoom in to the M, I'll zoom in like this, just so that I can see everything. Okay, once I have everything selected, I'll navigate up top here to one, two, three. And this will reposition all of my objects on the screen here as I press the number zero key. And I'll change that color to color number eight. And now I want to do a stitch player again to see the stitch sequence. As it goes through, it stitches everything in the order that I that I asked it to there. 
and I'll navigate up top and I'll click save. I'm going to click stop. At this point now, um, I want to check my density settings. I'll press control A to select everything on the screen. I'll navigate up top to my fills and I'll use the auto spacing here at 80%. I'll press enter. The next thing I want to do, I want to run the small stitch filter as I navigate up top. This will run on whenever you save your design as your stitch data file, like your DST files, to remove small stitches. The default here is at 3 tenths of a millimeter. And what that means is every stitch that's less than 5 tenths of a millimeter, it will remove it from the design. Okay lowering the stitch count for the design as well. I'll click save. Last but not least, I'll now save my file as a machine stitch data file. As I go to file, I'll choose export machine file. I'll navigate to my save as type. I'll click my down arrow and I will choose DST and I will save to that location. I thank you for coming and I hope you learned something in today's class and I hope to see you in another session as we cover more topics. Thank you. Have a good day.